down deep. Well, it's the same thing for spiritual things. We have to dig down deep and find mm -hmm. deeper things. And uh, there's a, a lot of wonderful things uh, that we can find on the, in the surface uh, in, uh, uh, in the Word of God and in the things of the Spirit. On the surface, we can find wonderful things. But there's more riches as we dig mm -hmm. down deeper. And so the title of the message tonight are the deep things of God. Because God has deep things that he wants to uh, show you. And it's not my intention tonight to tell you what all these deep things are, but I will certainly give some indications. Uh, because it's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will reveal deep things to you uh, that he might not uh, to me. And so there are different things uh, that the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to all of us. And it's really the deep things of God. And it's exciting that to know that there's more and more uh, that God has for all of us uh, than we've even imagined. Mm. And so we're going to talk tonight about what are some of those deep things, how do we receive them, and what are the benefits of looking for the deep things you know, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Well, the kingdom is a deep thing. It's one of those deep things. Uh, so I want Sherry to start with uh, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 10. And I'll show you that God has incredible things in, uh, prepared for you, uh, things that you could not even imagine, you cannot see, you cannot even hear, but he has these wonderful, wonderful things uh, prepared for all of us, and he wants us uh, to find them. And the way we find them is through the Holy Spirit. So walking in the Spirit is really uh, what this message is about. We need to be walking in the Spirit to find the wonderful things that God has for us. Sherry, mm -hmm. read these verses. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 11. <clears throat> but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And that's us. Yes. Yes. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit mm -hmm. searches the deep things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except by the Holy Spirit of God. Okay, so here it is. There are things that God has already prepared for you, and the Holy Spirit has been seek, uh, searching those things out. They're in the heart of God, and they're bringing them out. Uh, the Holy Spirit's bringing them out so that we can walk in these deep, deep things. And... Uh, I cannot tell you what all they are. They're just more than uh, we can imagine. It's an infinite number of deep things that God has for each of us. But one I want to think about and talk about for a moment is love. Mm -hmm. uh, his love, and it says the meaning of his love is that he gave his son. He gave the best that he had. Mm -hmm. And you might think, well, when he sent his son to the earth as a uh, baby, uh, that was giving his son. Well, but you know, First John uh, four says that really the gift of the of Jesus and the gift of the Son of God to uh, purchase the earth was on the cross uh, through his mm -hmm, death mm -hmm. and burial and resurrection. So it didn't just end there at his being uh, sent to the earth as a seed and then as a being born as a baby. But it was on the cross. Well, what happened there? That's mm -hmm. when what God did. He so loved the, the world, world that he gave his only begotten son. So that's where, where, it, where he really gave him was on the cross because uh, he had been with his son, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit had always existed in eternity. But there was a time when there was a separation there at the cross when Jesus became sin for us then uh, god's eyes were so pure that he couldn't even look upon him so that was when there was the great separation 
between God and his son. And so the love of God, that is the, the love of God. And uh, Ephesians 3 uh, has this interesting verse about the love of God. I want you to read these two verses. Okay. Three verses. Ephesians 3, 17 <laughs> through 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes human knowledge okay, we're talking, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Okay, so we're talking about deep things. What are the deep things? Well, one of the deep things is love. God's love. Mm -hmm. We saw it that he would give his only begotten son for us. But we see it here in the Ephesians. It talks about the width and the length and the breadth and the depth and the height. And I may have not said that exactly in the right order, but there was the depth in there. It's deep. Yes, deep. There is deep. Uh, the love of God is deep. And so I'm just going to go over just a, uh, three or four I guess five different things that that I consider to be deep things. And well, the first can I sing one is a little for us? Okay. It's about love. Okay. Just to know the love of God that reaches down to fallen man and lifts him up from out of sin where he has trod. Just to know that God is real. He's real. He is real. And his love is real. His love Hallelujah. is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it reached down to me. Amen. God loved me uh, even before I knew him. But he loved me. He loved me in eternity. Hallelujah. And Okay. So love, there's a depth to love. And you can only understand the depth of love is through the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit reveals that to you. Another one is wisdom, God's wisdom, uh, just the depth of that. You know, Proverbs uh, 4, 7, I, say, I believe, says wisdom is the principal the thing. thing. It's the number one thing. Get wisdom. wisdom. Oh, hallelujah. When all, all that you do, get wisdom. And, and he said in Ephesians that the, the many facets of his wisdom are going to be uh, made manifest, mm, uh, be mm. made known by the church. That's yeah, you and me. That's right. We're going to tell the devil. We're going to show the devil the wisdom of God. Amen. You know, the devil never would have said the, that the princes of this world would never have crucified the Lord of glory had they known uh, what was going to happen because they didn't have the wisdom of God. But God's wisdom is so deep, so uh, incredible, uh, so wonderful. Uh, and it, But the church, that's you and me, we're going to find out that wisdom, and we're going to make yeah, walk even in the, it. We're going to walk in it, and we're going to make the demons regret the fact Amen. that they ever crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. So wisdom, there's a depth to wisdom. Uh, and so many facets uh, to wisdom. So all, all I'm doing here is just giving you some ideas of some of the deep things. things. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to understand all of these deep things at the end of uh, the session tonight, because this is a lifetime journey. What we're really talking about here is a lifetime journey of just going deeper and deeper in the things of God. You know, uh, uh, Ezekiel talked about there was a river coming out from the throne of God mm -hmm. and uh, some people were there on the bank and some people were just uh, inside the water just a little bit. The water was getting muddy uh, and some were just uh, had just a little bit to the to the ankles and some to the knees and some to the waist. But, but there's a depth and we all need to go deeper and deeper and it's a lifetime a journey. And so what I'm talking about tonight is not anything about a formula of how to find the deep things. It's just to give you an overview and a challenge to all of us that there are more things in God that and when we really look in the deep things of God and not just hang around the surface things, but really get into the deep things of God. And that's 
that's where Ezekiel finally got. He got so deep in the water of God that yeah, mm -hmm. he had to depend on the Lord. Uh, that's right. He, he was no longer yeah. him. The spirit was carrying him. Uh, as long as he was there on the bank, he it was all about him. But when he got into the into the <laughs> river of God, then the spirit carried him along where the spirit would would carry him. Now there's a uh, we also know that faith, hope, and uh, love will last throughout eternity. So all of those are Amen. deep things. But the last three I want to. Uh, mention are in Matthew 23, 23, which I think is an incredible verse. And I will ask Sherry to read it to you, but I want you to see that that Jesus said these are things that are really, really important, and that's justice, mercy, mercy and, and faithfulness. faithfulness. <clears throat> wow. <clears throat> Let's go over those three again. Justice, mercy, <clears throat> and faithfulness. This is out of the Amplified Bible. Woe to you, the self-righteous person, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you give a tenth or a tithe of your of your money and deal in cumin, uh, focusing on minor matters and have neglected the weightier matters, the more important spiritual provisions of the law, which are justice, mercy, and faithfulness, okay. faithfulness. But these are the primary things you ought to have done without neglecting the other. Okay. It's important to tithe. It's important <laughs> to give, and it's important to 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 do the things that are written in the Word of God. But these three: justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Okay. We are not to ignore those. Okay. So I'm just mentioning a few things that are deep. That, that there's a lot of depth in these that we can go deeper and deeper in these things. So I'm just giving this uh, uh, to whet your appetite yes. and the things I've talked about. Uh, and, and this will really be all that we'll present in this area or, or love, faith and hope and wisdom mm -hmm. and justice and mercy and faithfulness. faithfulness. So there are th those, if we just found out the depths of those things so we'd be busy for a lifetime finding the depths of those things so well but, and this is also a message to challenge to challenge each one of us to get into the word of god and find out more about what god says about mercy okay. and what he says about justice and what he says about love and and so that's the way i see this message for myself is a challenge uh, for me to to go deeper into the Word of God, which is the river, which is the the water. Hallelujah. Okay, that's good. Now I have uh, seven points I'd like to make about how we can go deeper and deeper. Uh, and, and but this is a lifetime journey. And, and again, I'm not presenting these seven as a formula to follow or that we all have to go out and start doing all of them at once but they're just things that we need to be aware of these are the ways that we will go deeper and deeper with the lord and in the spiritual realm in the supernatural realm uh, and, and the first one is about prayer it's going to take some prayer mm -hmm. you know ephesians uh, uh 6 18 says uh, pray at all times and then mm -hmm. First Thessalonians 5 says, pray without, with, ceasing. without ceasing. So, and also there's that meditation. We need to be communicating with God. And it, it it's not, you know, God didn't say, oh, you can pray on this day or you can pray at the beginning of the day. He said, pray at all times. Mm -hmm. Don't stop praying. So praying and communicating with God is very important. And this point is really prayer and meditation, and uh, you know. And let's psalmist, define. Let's define the meditate. The meditation in uh, uh, Psalm, he said, "Let the words of my mouth and, and the, the meditation of, of my, my heart be acceptable, O Lord, in your sight." Now, the the Lord uh, spoke to Joshua and said to meditate day. on my word day and night. night. You know, there's an Eastern 
uh, meditation that tries to get the mind empty, uh, but not uh, not scriptural uh, for us as Christians. Christians are to meditate on the word of God. To fill their mind <clears throat> with the word. Because if you get your mind empty, the devil can come in there and play mm -hmm. uh, havoc uh, on your life. And, but So we're to meditate. And that's what it says in Joshua, uh, that we are to meditate on the word of God Amen. day and night. So my first point is prayer and meditation. But again, it's meditating on the word of God. Second, uh, my second point is searching the scriptures and uh, give ourselves to reading, reading the scriptures. These are the instructions to Timothy. Read the scriptures, mm -hmm. study the scriptures to show yourself a, a workman to mm -hmm. be approved and not to be ashamed. Uh, so those are uh, in Thessalonians. I won't have Sherry read them, but just let us hear where that last verse is. Second mm. Thessalonians, Second Timothy, I'm sorry. Mm, Second, Second Timothy 2.15. <clears throat> Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Remember last week, was it last week that we talked about discerning? Yeah. We talked yeah. last week about uh, discerning of spirits and, and using that to know the good and the evil and whether something was from God or from the enemy. And this right here, it says rightly dividing the word of truth. And so this is, this is, uh, we need to study in order to do that. Okay. And then there's one other verse I want to cover here. And this is from Hebrews and it is solid food. And it's talking about the word mm -hmm. of God, the real solid food out of the scriptures mm -hmm. belong to those who are mature mm -hmm. we could say deep things okay the deep things belong to those who are mature mm -hmm. who by reason of practice they have practice 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 and uh, their senses and by that uh, they can get the deep things of god and, mm -hmm. and okay so uh, again i have just seven things to consider uh, that would help all of us to uh, grow spiritually and be more intimate with the Lord. Amen. See, that, that's what this... To become one with the uh, Lord. Becoming, uh, uh, knowing the deep things of God requires us being growing spiritually and being intimate with the Lord. You cannot be isolated from the Lord and know the deep things because they they come out of, out of his presence and out out of intimacy uh, mm -hmm. with him. Now, the third point I want to talk about is praise and worship. And, uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, Hebrews says we need to make the sacrifices of praise. Sacrifices of praise. That's, that's that you praise the Lord even when you don't feel like Amen. it. Amen. Even when you've got difficulties all around you, but we're still supposed to Sac make sacrifices mm -hmm. of praise and give him thanks. Mm -hmm. So even in difficulty, now it's easy to praise the Lord when mm -hmm. everything is going your way mm -hmm. and everything you're uh, on top of everything. But when things are difficult, you're also supposed to be praising him and thanking him and not, yeah, not thanking him for what the devil has done, That's but right. what God is doing. See, I have focused is on the Lord Amen. and not on the enemy. Amen. I bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. I bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And I offer up to him the sacrifices of thanksgiving and i offer up to you the sacrifices of joy even when you don't feel like it even when you're tired and you're weary and your muscles are hurting then that is the time to worship the lord hallelujah and you know from uh 
John chapter 4, uh, there was this incredible uh, discussion, very deep discussion uh, between Jesus and the woman of Samaria at the well. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. she, uh, once she realized he was a prophet, then she started talking about worshiping God. And, and he said, you don't even know no, who you worship. <laughs> who you worship. You, you, and he's saying, God is world seeking true, true worshipers. worshipers. Is that you? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I want to be a true worshiper. I, I'm volunteer for that assignment. A true worshiper. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And uh, he said, uh, we must worship him in, in spirit, spirit and in truth. God is a spirit and we must mm -hmm. worship him in spirit and truth. In you know, there's a lot of times he didn't say must, but he, he said right there, must worship him mm, in mm, spirit mm, and, and truth. In truth. I, I take that to be very important. Mm, so mm. worship is a one of the points to, to find out the deep things of God, to be deeply connected with his heart. See, what we want mm, to know is mm, what mm, is he mm. thinking? What's in his yes, heart? Yes. What's in, what are his desires? Mm, oh, mm. worship is a good way to get to that point with him where he can reveal what his desires are and what he uh what he wants to do in your life and through you hallelujah oh, hallelujah you know i find many times that people um they they do love the lord but they when they pray they're praying about their agenda they're praying about their problems. The, their their problems. They're praying about uh, their scheduling and and it's it's not that may not be what the Lord desires and and so we need to stop and and say Lord what is it is in your heart show me your heart Lord and and I will do whatever is in your heart. Because it says when we do what he wants us to do, what he desires, then everything else will in in our lives will come together. Hallelujah. Okay. They, so if your life is falling apart, then you need to find out what's in God's heart and do that. And do that. And then he'll start putting everything together uh, for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, we're down through three points. My fourth point is the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You need a relationship mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so that he can guide you. You know, John 16, 13 says that when the Spirit comes, he will guide you, show you, reveal to you. He, um, I think the, the New King James says he's going to show you the all truth all truth don't you want to know all mm, truth i want to know all truth <laughs> who knows that to show it to mm. you only uh, the, the holy, holy spirit. spirit then romans uh, 8 14 says uh those who are led by the spirit amen uh, they amen. are the sons of god and that word sons right there uh in the greek it means a, is a we hope and mm. wheels and uh it means they are the mature sons uh, mature sons, mm. of course, in Christ, there's neither male nor female. Mm -hmm. there, there's not male and there's not female. It's we're just spirit beings. We are spirit mm. beings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's where mature sons are led by the spirit mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. So we need a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus said that uh, my sheep will hear my, my voice. voice. He said, I'm going to come in and the uh, the uh, porter's going to open the gate to me uh and that's mm -hmm. the holy spirit and the holy mm -hmm. spirit and of course we're also porters and uh, we can open our own gates by the spirit of god and we need to hear the voice of the lord and the voice of the spirit it's very important and we can't be led by the spirit if we're not hearing what he said hallelujah hallelujah but my sheep hear my voice yes amen Amen. Well, we're down. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I just wanted to say it just, um, I feel like the, the Lord just said this to me that the scripture that says pray without ceasing. When you're led by the Spirit of God, 
And so every, every place you go, everything that you do is by the Spirit, then that is part of praying without ceasing. Is is just being right there where the Holy Spirit wants you to be. Doing what he wants you Doing to do. Doing what he wants you to do. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So uh, I have three more points. And again, this is not about a formula. They're not fixed. They're just some things to think about. And we're just going to go through them quickly. And, and the, the fifth one is obedience. That when uh, the Lord speaks something to us, tells us something, we need to obey it. And you may have received a prophetic word. Well, you get a prophetic word at some point in time in your life. You get a prophetic word to obey it. Uh, and if you don't obey it, then God's not ready to just give you another prophetic word or uh, give you other instructions if you're not obeying what he said to do. So he, he'll just uh, give you uh, uh, instructions about doing something, and then he waits on you to do it. And uh, you may go through it for uh, two or three years, and you may not do it, uh, and you want to hear from him. Well, it's best to just go back. What did he say to you? Uh, what was the last thing he said to you? Have you been obedient to the last thing mm -hmm. the Lord said to you? Mm -hmm. Obedience is very important. And uh, our obedience is different than they did in the Old Testament. They had a lot of rules and regulations. But uh, in the New Testament, Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. And this is uh, John 13. He said, I give you a new commandment, and that is that you're to love of one another uh, mm -hmm. as, as I, I have loved, loved you. you. And so our commandment uh, is to love one another as Jesus Christ loved us. You know, the Old Testament was you could love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you just loved yourself a little bit, you you were Would okay. <laughs> you could just leave, love your neighbor, neighbor a, a little, little bit. bit. <clears throat> but in the New Testament, Jesus loved us a whole lot. He gave his life for mm -hmm. us. He gave all for us. Mm -hmm. uh, he gave everything for us. How much he loved us. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, you love one another like I love you. So the standard has Woo! changed. In the New Testament, the it's standard gotten a little bit is, deeper. is deeper. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, I, what we do, <laughs> we've got, we need to know the deep things. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Galatians says that the whole law mm -hmm. is fulfilled in, in love. love. In the love. If yeah. you fulfill love, you have fulfilled the whole the law. law. There are all kinds of rules and regulations in the law. But all we have to do is love. But we have to be consistent mm -hmm. with it. Love, love, love. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's an unselfish love. And that's an unconditional love. Uh, but that will fulfill. So obedience is... Uh, uh, um, and obedience <coughs> opens up our hearts so that we can know the deeper things. If we're not obedient to what he's telling us to do right now or what he's saying to us, then... How how is he going to show us even deeper things? And so as you're obedient in what you're doing for the Lord, then he's going to take you a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Uh, there's a little song that we used to sing with the children. Uh, Step into the water. Wait a little bit deeper. Put your feet in, in the waters of his love. love. Step into the water, wait a little bit deeper. Come join the angels singing praises to the Lamb of God. Woo! Hallelujah! That's good. Okay, the sixth point is stay in community, stay in fellowship with Christians, uh, that we have to have that uh, mm -hmm. fellowship. Uh, John said it in First John 4, <clears throat> I mean First John 1, that uh, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship Amen. one with another. We will have it if we walk in the light as he is in the light. But mm -hmm. a lot of people, uh, they're in the darkness, and so they don't want to have That's fellowship. Right. So for us to walk in the deep things of God, we've got to be in community. We've got Whoa, to be hallelujah. with Fellowship believers in. operating in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. We're not 
in isolation. We're not an island unto ourselves. That's right. We need to be a part of the body of Christ and participating in fellowship uh, and loving one another. Not, not the. Uh, I know some people have come to. Uh, church services and they're mad yeah uh, but i'm talking about loving one another and that's what true fellowship is about amen amen hallelujah hallelujah thank you on the seventh one <clears throat> i think where that's gotten us down mm -hmm. to the seventh point. seventh point we're going to practice spiritual discipline mm. Okay, now mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. take on a lot of different forms. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of different, that could be with your reading, your studying. Your fasting. And it could be fasting, praying, uh, but have some kind of a discipline in your life. The thing that God started us in our ministry was Isaiah 58. And I just mm -hmm. uh, want to cover Isaiah 58, verse 6. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the fast that he's told us to fast, and of course, I fasted a lot over my life. <clears throat> but the fast that he told me to do was this. Is not this the fast that, that I, I have chosen, chosen to loose the bands of, of wickedness, wickedness and do the heavy, heavy burdens, burdens to let the oppressed press go, go free, free and that you break, break every, every yoke. yoke. <clears throat> so that's what we're supposed to be doing something. We're mm -hmm. going to be helping people. Now, how do you break a yoke? Well, lay hands on the sick and see them recover that's a way to break a yoke if you turn sickness and you do away with sickness and bring healing if you bring peace where there's chaos if you bring uh uh comfort oh, yes. where, where they're grieving if you if bring you hope hope uh, where there if is no hope. hope so that's breaking yokes right there so that's number seven Hallelujah. have some type of discipline in your life be led by the spirit because this is all about the spirit this whole message is about the Spirit, about walking in the Spirit. And how can two walk together unless they be agreed? We have to walk in the Spirit with the Spirit. And uh, tonight we're not even talking about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Of course, that's a part, a part of it. But walking in the Spirit so that the Holy Spirit will show the deep things of God to us. Now, why? What are the benefits of this uh, of this concept and this message I'm talking about tonight. It's the deep things of God. How do we how do we benefit from knowing the deep things of God? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Jesus prayed that you and I would be one with him. Hallelujah. That, that is John chapter mm -hmm. seventeen, Seven. verses twenty through twenty two. I'll let you read that church. Okay. I do not pray for these the twelve disciples alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may be one, that's ye, all of us, that we may be one with the Father, just like I'm one with you, Father, he's saying, that the world may believe that you sent me, and the glory which you gave me, I have given unto them, that they may be one, just as we are one. Hallelujah. Okay. So here, here it is. Well, what's a benefit of it? Well, because Jesus wants us to be one with him. And that's the way to be one with him. You, you've got to know the deep things of God in order to be one with Jesus. <clears throat> so you need to be walking in the Spirit and uh, led by the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit show you the deep things of God. And then you'll be one with Jesus and this is my final verse I want to talk about, and that is John 14, 12, which we all know. And that says yes. that uh, if we believe, that we'll do the works of Jesus and even greater things than this. So this is important. If you want to do the works of Jesus, you want to do what God has called you to do uh, in this life, then you need to know the deep things of God. You need to be exposed to these deep things. And tonight I've just listed how we uh, I've talked about, introduced first of all, uh, how the Holy Spirit reveals these deep things to us. And then I mentioned a few of the deep things like love and wisdom and uh, mercy. And then I, I listed seven things, uh, seven different uh, 
areas that we could work on in our lives so that we're in a position for the Holy Spirit to show us the deeper things. And then I've ended with just simply saying this, there are great benefits, great benefits yeah, from knowing the deep things of God so that you can be uh, in close fellowship with the mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and you can do the works of Jesus on this earth. So I want to thank you 